fears are growing that it won't be possible to stop the global spread of coronavirus. The is a pandemic. There are now more than 120 outbreaks of bird flu in the U.S. and it won't be the last. COVID-19 can be characterized as a pandemic. COVID-19 has affected many people's lives. It changed everything. The way we live, the way we communicate, the economy has collapsed. The world stopped. We live in such unprecedented times. According to the United Nations, the two greatest threats to humanity are climate change and the rise of infectious disease such as pandemic influenza. Right now, we're in the third epidemiological transition, which means we're in the third era of lots of disease in human history. According to the US Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, 75% or 3 out of 4 new or emerging diseases are zoonotic, which means they come from animals. And zoonotic diseases have become 4 times as frequent in the past 50 years. COVID-19 is strongly thought to have originated in the wet market in Wuhan. We know that is a zoonotic disease. It is easy for us, especially in the Western societies, to point our fingers at China and their culture of consuming exotic animal foods. However, it has happened all over the world. We are continuing to closely monitor the emergency cases of the H1N1 flu virus throughout the United States. H1N1, also known as the swine flu, which originated in Mexico, killed about half a million people in 2009. The genetic code of the virus was traced back to a pig farm in North Carolina. What about the worst pandemic in human history? The Spanish flu of 1918, which infected one third of the human population at the time, is thought to have originated in a poultry farm in Kansas. We've had HIV, AIDS, Ebola, MERS, and SARS. Nearly all epidemics and pandemics are caused by or linked to our treatment and exploitation of animals. Now, three of the world's leading authorities, the World Health Organization, the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, and the World Organization for Animal Health, had previously stated that one of the main risk factors for their emergence is our increasing demand for animal protein. Industrial animal farming has caused most new infectious diseases in humans in the past decade. Now, why is it? When we think of an American farm, we see this. However, according to the USDA, over 99% of the animals we consume today in the US and 90% worldwide come from factory farms, also known as concentrated animal feeding operations or CAFOs. This very efficient and profitable practice has become the standard model for animal farming all over the world. Tens of thousands of animals are packed in a small facility to maximize the farmer's profit. Egg-laying hens are on top of each other in small cages. Scientists from the US National Institutes of Health said, CAFOs facilitate rapid transmission and mixing of viruses. Therefore, factory farms are breeding grounds for the emergence of viruses. For a virus to survive, it needs to find a new organism, a host, because every host will eventually die. This very opposite of social distancing makes it easy for pathogens to find new hosts and spread. More hosts means more chances to replicate and mutate. The animals are selectively bred so they're genetically almost the same, which makes it even easier for the pathogens to spread. Pigs, for example, have a similar immune system to humans. Therefore, animal-to-human transmissions of viruses can easily happen in industrial farms, and the virus will effortlessly adapt to the human immune system. Plus, pigs have their tails cut off, and chickens have their beaks cut off, so they won't cannibalize under the stressful condition. Well, this only creates more infections. 30 minutes of exposure to UV rays completely inactivates H5N1, but the animals are barely getting any sunlight or fresh air. The animals live and sleep on their own feces. So with the unhygienic conditions and all those factors put together, humanity has officially invented the most ideal storm environment to create super strains of influenza. Modern factory farming is a factory of infectious diseases. So how is this possible? Why does no one ever talk about it? And why does the government let this happen? Well, the American Public Health Association, the largest body of public health professionals in the world, has called for a moratorium on CAFOs or factory farming for nearly two decades. Dr. Michael Greger, a physician, New York Times bestseller, and a diplomat of the American Board of Lifestyle Medicine, said in his epic speech 12 years ago, says the global poultry industry must reverse course away from greater intensification. Kind of like a snow emergency where you're just told to stay inside, don't go out unless it's an emergency. Everyone ready to stay in their homes for three months? If we have to go out to the corner store during a pandemic to buy toilet paper or something. This is not some vegan propaganda taking advantage of COVID-19. Science, 
knew this would happen. It actually happened so many times, but we clearly did not learn a lesson. Experts say that COVID-19 is just a dress rehearsal. So what's next? Experts fear the outbreaks of H5N1 and H7N9. They're both strains of avian influenza. According to the CDC's influenza risk assessment tool, H7N9 has the greatest potential to cause a pandemic, as well as potentially posing the greatest risk to severely impact public health if you were to achieve sustained human-to-human -human transmission. Now what exactly does that mean? COVID-19 has high human-to-human -human transmission capability, but a low fatality rate of somewhere around 0.5%. On the other hand, H5N1 and H7N9 have low human-to-human -human transmission capability, but what's concerning is that H7N9 has an infection fatality rate of 30%, and H5N1 has an infection fatality rate of 60%. Now, where do they come from? The emergence is linked to intensification of poultry sector, both in high-income countries and rapidly growing economies such as China. Now remember, viruses constantly replicate and mutate so rapidly in CAFOs. And in the highly globalized society today, countries trade animals and meat everywhere all the time. That means viruses from different parts of the world have an opportunity to come into contact with each other. And that's exactly how H1N1 started in Mexico back in 2009, killing half a million people. They had pigs from the US, which is the source, and Europe. The pathogens from those regions randomly exchanged their genetic components inside a pig's body, and that evolved into the deadly virus. Imagine one day, we could have a virus with a combination of high human-to-human -human transmission capability of COVID-19 and a high infection fatality rate of H7N9 or even H5N1. That's a jump from 0.5% to 60% fatality rate. Again, in a highly globalized society today, the virus will spread to every country in a matter of weeks. That will end humanity. Factory farms, it seems, can be thought of as the incubators for the emergence of highly disease-causing strains. A pandemic caused by H5N1 or some comparable future bird flu virus has the capacity to trigger one of the greatest catastrophes of all time. Now, before the 2009 swine flu pandemic, the virus was around in the pig population for over a decade. Therefore, the genetic components of the virus that will cause the next pandemic might have always been circulating in the animals that we eat today. A recent report supported by the United Nations Environmental Program identifies the eating and farming of animals as the single most risky human behavior in relation to pandemics and calls for urgent changes to the global food system in order to prevent the next outbreaks. It could happen anywhere, anytime. The question is never if, but always when. Finally, it's important to address the ethical concerns. Many emerging viruses are detected in factory farms before they're spread. So whenever that happens, or whenever something like a pandemic that disrupts the supply chain happens, and farmers are unable to sell all the animals they raise, they exterminate all the animals in the same facility. The industry calls it depopulation. And this happens all the time. We just get so lucky to not have those viruses spread in the cities. But is it lucky for them? Some of the methods include ventilation shutdown or putting the animals in a CO2 gas chamber, which are exactly what happened during this pandemic everywhere. We take their freedom away from them for our own benefits, and when we don't need them anymore because they're inconvenient, we kill them all. That's the reality of animal exploitation, and that is in turn hurting us. Now, the US government spends $38 billion subsidizing the animal agriculture industry every year. The same thing is happening with the EU. Without the subsidies, much of it wouldn't be able to exist today. Do we really want our tax money to go to an industry that practices such violence? And $38 billion for what? Diseases and pandemics? All for our spontaneous sensory pleasure? The government has announced the Farm System Reform Act, which prohibits the construction of new CAFOs and require all large CAFOs to cease operating as CAFOs by the year 2040. That's a great start in terms of reducing the risk of future pandemics, but that doesn't eliminate our exploitation of animals. Today, we live in a global nightmare. We now know what it's like to be in self-isolation or even forced quarantine. We have given our chance to reflect on ourselves and our actions. So perhaps during this short lockdown period, our dark days, we should think about those living in confinement for their entire life without sunlight. 
Maybe we should stop pointing our fingers at other cultures and look at our own and recognize the collective responsibility and accountability we have as a species. Most of us enjoy eating our cultured foods, but none of us like the fact that they come from animals. Thankfully, humanity has woken up to the realization that we don't have to do this anymore and we must stop it. And thankfully, we can now still enjoy the same foods that we love, just made from different sources. This simple switch alone, individual or societal, has a significant impact on combating the two greatest threats that humanity is facing. It's 2021. Let's vote for the food system that aligns with our values.